So I just completed my first ever Toro hosting experience, booking a customer for three days, getting my first Toro payouts. But as you saw in the title, that's not without a pretty huge problem. So I'm going to share all of that with you in this video. So Toro, the on-demand vehicle rental service, you can list your personal vehicle for rent. Shown here, this is my 2015 Volkswagen Passat that I'm currently listing here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for $64 a day. So here's the customer booking. It was a three-day weekend booking here in Pittsburgh from Friday dropping off Monday morning. So as a Toro host, you have to decide where am I going to make this drop off in essence? So you can set up deliveries. You can deliver to the customer's location. You can set delivery pickup points like an airport. You can say, hey, I'll bring it out there as a designated drop off spot. Or of course, you can do what I did, just drop off at your home, apartment, etc. So check in time with the customer. In this case, it was Friday early afternoon at 1130 a.m., First curveball. So the customer messaged me Thursday evening around 10 p.m. asking if they can pick up the vehicle later. This would be on Friday, right? So not 11.30 a.m., but 1 p.m. on that Friday. Now for me, from 11.30, changing it to 1 p.m., wasn't really a problem for me. I mean, we're doing it right here at my apartment complex, and I just kind of shifted my errands for that day. Wasn't really a problem. Now, I did notice in the Toro hosting app for me, it said modify trip, but I couldn't modify it for that pickup time. Now, you can request that the customer change it. So you could always do that, uh, especially if they're requesting an earlier time. Of course, you want to do that. But the modified trip for me, if I clicked on that as a host, all it said was cancel trip. So 1 p.m. came and I bring the freshly detailed Passat down to the front, put the four ways on and meet the customer who was very punctual right at 1 p.m. So what is the check-in process like with the customer? So with most all of these side hustle apps, you have to follow the prompts in the app. And one of your biggest concerns maybe as a host is verification and ID. So you just verify the ID, you ask for the driver's license, make sure it matches the picture and the name, and it must actually match that reservation name on the booking. Now, I did notice on Toro support page, and there's a lot of FAQs and support pages, this note that says, note that Toro is actively working on building an automated in-app ID verification tool. So later this year, hosts will no longer need to verify their guests themselves for most trips. Stay tuned for updates. And I am a little surprised that it didn't ask me to take an actual picture. From what I can see, it didn't say, you know, verify the ID and take a picture. And I think that's kind of important because if you're doing, let's say, liquor delivery alcohol on DoorDash or any app, I mean, Uber Eats, they always ask you to take a picture of that ID and then the customer signs in those circumstances. Now, I did also see in the support page that there is contactless check-ins. Now, there's a whole kind of list of things and protection measures for that. But in those circumstances, Toro will ask for pictures to be uploaded by the customer. So I met the customer. We went through the car. I verified the ID. And, you know, basically you're doing kind of common sense things like, hey, here's how this works. Here's how you operate this, start the vehicle, etc. And asking several times if they had questions as well. You want to be a good host, provide good customer service before you, you know, let them go with the vehicle, basically. But other than that, the check-in process was pretty simple. And whenever you check in, the Toro app does ask that you upload pictures. And oh, did I take pictures. It says document your car's condition, document your car's condition to be eligible for your protection package. And then it says here, please take 10 to 15 photos to document the car's condition. I took about 65 pictures of my Passat and you should. This is something that I recommend that you do because this is a very, you know, expensive 
asset, this is an important asset for you, take as many pictures as you can think of, of every angle, wide shots, close-up shots, documenting any damage. My Passat did have a few scrapes, what have you. The cosmetic mirrors even. Just documenting everything because I did see a post on Reddit that said, hey, you know, if a client damages something in your vehicle and if you don't have a basically before picture, nothing's documented. So you can't prove that it wasn't damaged verdict take a lot of pictures and off they went with my passats for the entire weekend as i put my full faith in them in trusting them with my vehicle for an entire weekend so after that let's go through the check out process remember i mentioned there was a big problem a huge problem Let's address it now. So I've used Toro twice as a customer, once in Washington and then more recently in San Diego. And it was pretty seamless. The pickup process was basically like I described, just meet the host, hey, here's the keys, here's how everything works, here's where you need to drop it off. And that's kind of what I did too. I detailed, you know, hey, when you drop it off, just do this, leave the keys in the car basically and just park it, you know, legally in one of these spots. And that's basically what I did in San Diego. The guy's like, hey, just park it on the sidewalk anywhere here, you know, you can park for free and just drop the keys in my mailbox in that circumstance. But this time, yeah, there was a pretty big mistake at the drop-off, and it was not from the customer. It was from me. So yeah, it was 100% my fault. In getting tied up on a Zoom call, basically overlapping that drop-off time, and I'm thinking like, well, this is what I did in San Diego. It was a contactless drop-off, and most all of these side hustle apps, food delivery, package delivery, it's like contactless as well. And I told them, hey, just leave the keys in the car. It's fine. I got another set of keys. There is a problem with that. So here's what happened. So the customer wasn't able to, quote, you know, safely lock the vehicle with the keys inside and make sense. It's one of those radio frequency RF fobs and I guess the Passat's wouldn't, you know, make sense, allow itself to lock the keys in the vehicle. I assume it's going to be a contactless drop-off. That was not the case. So the customer wasn't able to reach me because of that and ended up waiting, trying to reach me, couldn't reach me, and then eventually contacted Toro Support. And Toro said, hey, you know, if you can't safely lock the key somewhere, you can mail it to the host myself. After that customer ended the trip, they rate you as a host. You do the same thing like some of these apps do. And I understandably got a bad rating because of that. And I tell you what, working in customer service for years, that's like the worst thing internally that I could feel. It's like, don't even care about the money at that point. I don't like upsetting someone and moreover, wasting someone's time. So immediately I'm messaging the customer. I'm like, hey, I had caught on a call. I'm sorry. I thought this was going to be a contactless thing. I, I just didn't know. So what I did, because here, let's take a look at the customer's invoice here. So this trip was $176.64. There was a three-day plus discount. That's something that you can set up as a Toro host. And we can see after Toro fees, my take-home pay was $132.48. Again, for me, I just offered them a 75% discount. I'm basically giving them this weekend long trip for free. And the customer read that, you know, firstly, I apologized. And then I looked at Toro support of what can I do? I hope I can reimburse them because there's no other solution that would make me at least somewhat satisfied is I need to give them some money back for this. So Toro does say, hey, you can do that as a host. And... Again, like I don't I don't want someone waiting. I it's 100% worth it to reimburse them for that inconvenience, 100%. So I'm like, look, I will reimburse you 75% of this entire trip just for this inconvenience. It's my fault, it's 100% my fault. It's the first time I'm doing this and I just didn't know. So the customer read that and they called me shortly after that. Uh, they did say like, hey, you don't have to do that. And I told them basically the same thing I'm telling you. Like, look, I've worked in customer service for years. I hate 
upsetting someone, you know, when it comes to a customer experience like this, this is not the environment, the hosting environment that I, that I want to have. This is my first trip. I want to keep doing this. And I mean, I'm like, no, please, please. And if they were unhappy with that, I, I'd comp the whole trip if they're unhappy with 75%. And that's the best that you could do. Now, look, I mean, having worked in customer service, People are going to be like, whoa, you did way too much. You know, like, why would you comp them 75%? There's going to be people like, you should comp them the whole thing and more, and they're never going to be happy. And then there's going to be, pe- there's going to be people in the middle. You know, that's, I just communicated what happened. Now, that's a lesson. I'll tell you, like, straight up, that is a lesson. And I'll tell you this as a prospective host that I've done most every single side hustle out there. All the big ones, I've basically done them since 2015. This is what I do here. I help you make money in different side hustles. And look, if you're in this circumstance, this situation rather, that you can't expect to be perfect. You know, things do happen. If, if someone said, if someone's irate with you and they are just so angry that they're not going to understand that, that mistakes happen, especially if you're new on any really gig app. Mistakes will, ha- I've had mistakes, wrong turns when I did ride share, turning down one ways, just m- making mistakes. Food delivery, I've had, mis- I've spilled things before doing food delivery. And this is a mistake. So the verdict for me, and I'll, I'll give you a verdict on my first uh, hosting experience here, but just in general, is what I action items for me is combing th- through those FAQs even more, going through the the host, you know, frequently asked questions to see, okay, if I want to do a contactless drop off, which you can do, how can I avoid this in the future? So number one, there's things like this, a lock box or a Faraday box where you can actually keep a spare key or you can have the customer delivered to this Faraday box. So you can say, hey, put this in this RF blocking pouch, put this in this Faraday box, this is a secure box and actually some models magnetically attach beneath your vehicle. You could do that. So you can say, hey, this is, you know, lock the car first and then you can safely put it in this RF blocking pouch so it won't cause any locking or unlocking problems. You can secure it away. Or like I basically had in San Diego, I can have maybe an envelope delivery. I can say, hey, put my name on it, put it in a sealed envelope and deliver it to the lobby of the apartment. Look, apart from my mistake of just not knowing, the actual process was super smooth. I mean, the biggest concern is like, what happens if someone takes my vehicle? And I've looked into Toro's terms of service and some, again, YouTube hacks that you can put trackers on your vehicle, disclose it somewhere, but you can actually have that, you know, GPS tracking. But, you know, it wasn't that. There was no damage. Like, that's another concern, right? What happens if there's a damage? And I, I've seen some stories, maybe like you, but there's none of that. And that's kind of why it pains me so much. But you have to keep remembering like problems will happen if you're new and I will definitely do it again, you know, becoming more educated as a Toro host. And honestly, I'll leave you with this with doing as many side hustles that I've done is Toro is more involved. I mean, it is more involved with the intricacies of, you know, what if this happens? Well, what if that happens? How do I exactly do this? What about, you know, insurance protections and and this and that? What accessories should I provide the customer to, you know, better their experience? It's not just like, hey, you know, drop me off here or maybe food delivery. So a little discouraged there, but I think that kind of comes from the, the customer service side of me. I want everyone to have, you know, the best experience possible, but hopefully, you know, that's an amended, uh, situation. And actually the customer did say nicely that, uh, she would revise, uh, that rating as well. So I have zero problems with taking the hit on the revenue. I told her, don't worry about it. And I actually have no problems after my first experience as a Toro host. So I do anticipate hosting again with that Passat. So we'll see much cleaner, much better this time on the drop off. So stay tuned. If you got value in this video, can you do me a favor? Can you drop a like on this video? I appreciate it. It helps out the channel. Thank you. And you can also click or tap screen here for my newest video, as well as a video recommended for you. And I'll see you in the next one.